in that thought process, I'm, I'm guessing that you were still like, okay, I still want to do something related to health. And you said that you went and got your master's of public health at, at Drexel University. What, when did you hear about public health? Or was it just like in looking for something to do outside of physician, outside of medical assistant that you heard about public health? Yeah, that's an interesting story as well, because, um, you know, at the before I even uh, sort of pursued my master's in public health, uh, as I had mentioned, I had no idea about sort of what public health was, you know, what types of jobs I could get in public health. I, I really had no clue. And what happened was, um, I believe, if I recall, um, I had gotten a call from the school um, that offers a master's in public health, a, a couple of schools, maybe they, I guess they sort of somehow got my contact information from applying to medical school. And I, I don't know if they knew that I didn't get accepted to medical school. I, I don't know what it was, but, um, you know, I got a call and it was like, oh, hello, you know, we're calling from the admissions and, um, you know, we thought you might be interested in a master's in public health at our school. And, you know, I was like, well, what is that? <laughs> I have no idea what that really is. And so, you know, they, they give you a little brief introduction into public health. And after that, I was like, oh, you know what? This sounds kind of interesting, you know, and this, you know, maybe this is something that um, I could do and really enjoy and it's related to health. And I was like, you know, I, I don't want to be a personal trainer or a medical assistant for the rest of my life. I'm, nothing wrong with those um, jobs. So, you know, it was just like I was thinking, you know, what else can I do? And I, I, I was like, OK, you know, this sounds interesting. Let's give it a shot. So that's sort of like I, I just took a risk, you know, and um, I, I didn't know everything about it. But I think that's it's a good, important lesson there that you know, sometimes you don't have to know everything about um, a certain situation or opportunity in order to go for it, right? You need to sometimes, you know, be willing to take a risk, um, you know, and, and sometimes those risks pay off, sometimes they don't pay off. But if you don't take the risk, you won't know, <laughs> right? Um, and so that that's sort of what I felt and that's what I did. I took the risk. Basically, absolutely, absolutely agree with that. And I think to, to that point, it's like you knew that you wanted to do something in health. You didn't know about public health before people reaching out to you. So you're like, hey, this is something related to health. Maybe in this and in learning about this, I will find what I want to do. And you during that time, you chose to go down like the tract of epidemiology. And you said that was also like just choose it out of the out of a barrel type of thing. And, and to this day, you said that you you appreciated and liked that. Like looking back on on that decision to choose epidemiology, what what were, what were the things that kind of got you into wanting to become an epidemiologist or like solidify that this is what you wanted to do going forward? Yeah, again, um, I I wasn't sort of familiar with the different fields in public health, right? So you know, there's as I mentioned, epidemiology, there's community health, there's environmental health, there's health policy, there might be others. Uh, but at my school, those were sort of the main four options that we had to choose to specialize in. And, you know, luckily, uh, they didn't ask us to choose right away. So like our first year, we were exposed to all these different, um, you know, possibilities in public health. We would take classes in all of them. Uh, so I was learning a little bit about each, right? And, and so that helped me sort of decide, uh, as well as, um, you know, on my own time, I would sort of look into epidemiology more and sort of learn about it and what, what was involved with that. And I, I try to get a sense of like what jobs um, I, I could work in sort of doing that. And, you know, when I saw like epidemiologists, I was like, wow, you know what, this, this sounds pretty cool and interesting um, again, you know, dealing with sort of, um, and, and within epidemiology, there's a lot of different places you can get involved in as well, right? Um, but I knew that, you know, I, I wanted to sort of get into epidemiology because it, it, it looked at sort of different diseases and, 
you know, the, the life cycle of these diseases and sort of what to do, um, you know, to sort of prevent these diseases and, you know, sort of understand them better. And, and that's like my mind. I have sort of like an analytical mind. So I, I think I also gravitated towards, you know, um, epidemiology, which also includes biostatistics and research. And so I felt like, you know, maybe I wanted to get involved in, in that as well. Um, so again, I wasn't a hundred percent positive because I, I didn't know what to expect as far as the day-to-day -day job. Right. Um, but you know, I, I was able to sort of, as, as part of my master's project that I had to complete to get my degree, uh, I was able to sort of do an internship, you know, and work with an organization and I was working in epidemiology and that sort of helped me as well. So I sort of got more exposure that way and, and sort of that solidified my decision at that time. I was like, okay, you know, I think this is what I want to do. Yeah, that, that is definitely something that I also recommend, like just getting exposure because as, as you know, like learning in school and the theoretical stuff and actual applying it in a job setting could be two completely different things. So, so I highly, highly recommend that. And then you, you shared that after your MPH, you worked in TB control for a couple of years, um, doing like genomic sequencing, a little bit of contact tracing, it, it sounded like, and then you wanted to kind of expand more on epidemiology and you decided to, to go into, um, infection control. Can you talk a little bit about if somebody was in that same position, like right now, they're in epidemiology, but they wanted to get more into infection control, what types of things would you advise them to do? Yeah, so um, it, it actually, as I had mentioned, it has opened up because traditionally the infection control uh, world, you know, hires like nurses, right, for that those types of positions. Um, so I was lucky, at least, especially in the beginning when I had no experience um, and not being a nurse to get a position in infection control. Um, so it is possible for sure um, for, you know, a non-registered nurse to get a job in infection control. But even so, even if you're a registered nurse, I think, you know, it, it is important, um, I, I would say, to work in the hospital setting to sort of because obviously that's where you're going to be working in, right? In infection control, for the most part, um, you want to get familiar or try to get familiar with the hospital setting. Um, it, it is a whole different world, right? When you're working in the hospital, um, it's very different from working in an office, right? An office building or something like that. Um, so obviously you got to be comfortable working in that type of setting. Um, so I, I would say that's one thing if you could volunteer or something along those lines. Um, additionally, just get involved in sort of different groups, if you can, with infection control, right? So you get familiar sort of uh, with the uh, work of infection control, like what you'll be doing and sort of what's involved with that and things of that sort. Um, so, you know, any types of groups that you can get involved in, um, especially on LinkedIn or what have you, um, podcasts, of course, you know, getting on podcasts and listening to sort of people about infection control, things of that sort, um, you know, being part of the organizations, obviously, the professional organizations like uh, APIC, the Association of Professionals in Infection Control, um, that's sort of the big one. Um, and just like, um, you know, networking with people in the field, if you can, as much as possible as well. I mean, so the, the bottom line is, is really just exposing yourself as much as possible and trying to just get more familiar with it, uh, you know, before you go into it, if, if you can, um, because it, it really is helpful to do that before you do it, because you don't want to sort of go into the job and then, you know, a month later decide, well, you know, I really don't like this. This is not for me, you know, with any job, obviously, but, you know, with infection control, it, it is quite an interesting job. And, you know, it's like, like I said, you know, there's a lot involved with it. And, um, 
you sort of have to be comfortable with that and, and sort of what's entailed with that job. Yeah, so definitely like dipping your toe in the water to see how, how it is, maybe trying to get those volunteer or internship experiences to really kind of get a better grasp of like what are the things that you you are going to do. And I, I really liked how you spoke about um, in, in infection control. Not only are you protecting the patients, but you're protecting the the health professionals as well, which I think is is a cool perspective and not something that everyone gets to do so uh that, that 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 was pretty cool to hear about what's up friends if you enjoy that clip from public health careers then press here for the full unedited episode and don't forget to subscribe and share peace